Hello you fantastic people and welcome back to Borderlands 3 to a super exciting video which I'm so keen to bring to you guys. In this video I have collected all the legendary weapons in Borderlands 3. I'm going to show you guys where all the dedicated drops are for them. In this one it's just the assault rifles. Uh, if you guys want to check out all the other ones that are already being made or they're about to be made, check the description for them or the end card title screen should have the playlist there for you guys and you'll be able to see all the legendary weapons in Borderlands 3 and their dedicated drops. In this video, like I said, I'm going to go through the assault rifles. I'll tell you guys whether or not they can come with certain elements, if they can come anointed, whether or not they're in the world drop system, their exact dedicated drop locations, uh, which ones I would recommend. If there are quests enrolled, I'll show you guys where to get the quests, walk through the necessary steps to get them for you guys. Just quickly though, I know there'll be a bunch of different people watching these videos, like new players, regular players, and people who just come back after not playing for a while. Dedicated drops are not affected by guardian rank luck. They're not affected by artifact luck. They're not affected by what mayhem level you're on, what level true vault hunter, normal vault hunter, if there's a new one coming out, it's not gonna be affected by any of those. Dedicated drop rates are always the same regardless. The only thing that will change, if you are on high mayhem level, the damage is gonna be increased on them and the chances of them being anointed will increase, but the drop rates of the guns themselves will not change. On top of that, for example, say Tyrene has three dedicated drops. If she had a drop rate of 10%, there's no set drop rate by the way, but if there was, every 10% of the time it's going to drop one of those dedicated drops and it's going to randomly roll between the three that it has in her loot pool to drop. So it can sometimes shaft you with the RNG, sometimes you can go like 50 runs without getting one of the dedicated drops, or sometimes you might get three in a row, it's just honestly RNG. But yeah, essentially sometimes it can just take a really long time to get dedicated drops, unfortunately. Also, I'm gonna keep all the DLC weapons and seasonal event weapons separate. One, because there's only half the DLCs out so far, there's only up to DLC two, and seasonal events aren't always available, so I'll cover those separately. If you guys are watching this video a little bit later, feel free to check the description or the channel, there might be already a video on those ones. And just one last thing before we get into the dedicated drops these videos have been my biggest projects yet i really hope they help you guys out if they do feel free to smash subscribe down below if you guys hit that bell youtube will notify you for whenever i post a video and if you guys could help me out even more if you like and share the video it helps the channel grow even more and i'd really really appreciate it on top of that if you guys want to come check us out over on twitch i live stream every single day just after i post my youtube videos that's always linked in the description or you can just search code me on twitch my name is the same on all my social media twitch is usually just an awesome place to hang out with people that like borderlands chill out play some games get up to some shenanigans and just have a bunch of fun but yeah let's get into the dedicated drops i go through the order of the weapons in the manufacturer's uh default that was in the backpack uh, but i'm not gonna make you guys skip through them that the video is designed for you guys to come back and check every once in a while if you guys need it feel free to save it to your watch later so you guys can just come back if you forget any of the spots I am going to leave timestamps in the pinned top comment down below or the description as well. If you guys want to check it out, you can just skip to the random guns you need, get the information you need, and get back into playing Borderlands 3. But yeah, here are the dedicated drops. Up first, we have the Atlas Assault Rifles, starting with the Rebel Yell. This thing can only come in shock and non-elemental, but it can come with annoyments, as you can see down the bottom. It does come in the world drop system, but the dedicated drop spot for it, if you want to farm for the best of the best, is at the Sky Bullies. If you guys are looking for the Sky Bullies boss, go to Eden 6, then down to the Anvil, just at the top there actually. From the Fast Travel Station, it is quite a hike originally. From the Fast Travel Station at the bottom here, just run through this entire bandit camp, you get to this room, go upstairs and then in through here. This is where you meet Tiny Tina. You'll end up going outside to the left here, you enter this building, which is currently where I'm at. This is the closest new station. I would highly recommend if you're gonna farm this regularly to do this side mission because he has the most irritating quote ever if you farm it without doing that mission. Uh, but regardless, run through this area, use some spiritual drive to get there quickly. Uh, just run through this building to the right and then through this door. It will open eventually once you get to it. You'll find the Sky Bullies Zero Hunt Kill Thing Crew Challenge. That's the one. Essentially, I usually stand here, wait for one to come out, and then the second one will come out this door as well. There's two twins. They both share the same dedicated drops, which is fantastic, and they spawn every single time. These guys share three dedicated drops, including the Hex Grenade, the Rebel Yell Assault Rifle, as well as the Shooting Star Shield. The Shooting Star Shield particularly is dedicated just to these guys. It doesn't well drop whatsoever. The other two, the Rebel Yell, not too bad to obtain, but the Hex, it has a really low world drop rate so these guys are definitely your place if you guys are going to be farming for any of these weapons up next we have the second and final atlas assault rifle it is the carrier this thing can only come in non-elemental no elements whatsoever but it can come anointed as you can see down the bottom this thing is in the world drop system but if you want to farm for the best anointment you can farm it from judge hightower if you guys are looking for judge hightower you will have to go to promethea then to Electricity. If you guys have never opened Electricity before, if you're brand new to the game, you find a mission in Meridian 
Meridian Metroplex that is to 1v1 killable. It's a Moxie side mission that will originally unlock Lecture City for you guys. But once you've done that, go to Lecture City from the Fast Roll Station. It is a bit of a hike because uh, Lecture City is quite large. From the Fast Roll Station, just run out to the left all the way around this left hand side to get to this point. Uh, this little narrow hallway or like alleyway, I guess. Follow this thing all the way around. There is two options. There's a new station just here. Um, but I rather, if you guys are going to farm it regularly, or like a few times at least, I would run past this all the way up to where I currently am, which is the Killer Vault New Station, which is currently where I am. From the new station just here, there is the Killer Vault Fight. There is the Ammo Dump, which makes it really easy to farm this location, because you'll always have ammo no matter what your character. You can just jump off this balcony, head towards this opening, and this is where you'll find Judge Hightower. There's a whole bunch of, like, ex uh, Crimson Raider looking dudes, Atlas looking dudes, I don't know. These guys right here, the Hightower crew. Are you going to be looking for Judge Hightower specifically? There we go, that's the guy just there. Judge Hightower will spawn every single time. Pretty sure you have to kill a few of these guys for him to come out, though. He has three dedicated drops, including the Scorpio XL pistol, as well as the Conference Call uh, shotgun by Hyperion, and the uh, carrier assault rifle from Atlas. If you guys are going for these, it shouldn't be too difficult to farm. Three dedicated is a pretty average amount. The boss fight is pretty easy. He's not exactly a strong boss. He doesn't do that much damage, and he's just an Atlas dude. I'm pretty sure most people will be able to one-shot him with a really good build. If not, be able to shred him. And the run from the new station isn't too far. It's probably like 15, 20 seconds. Up next, we have the COV assault rifle, starting with the eruption. This thing can drop in fire, corrosive, and cryo, as well as non-elemental. Cannot drop in radiation and it cannot drop in shock. It does come with anointments like you can see down the bottom. It does also come with two different dedicated drop spots, neither of which are fast, unfortunately. Uh, the first one being Wotan slash Valkyrie Squad. They both drop this one, as well as the Raging Titan, the Slaughter Shaft boss, also drops this as well. Also forgot to mention, this thing does not drop in the world drop system. You can only get it from those two dedicated drop spots, so this one is a difficult one to get. If you guys are going for the Slaughter Shaft, you guys are going to want to go to Pandora first. If you've been there before, it'll just show up at the bottom. If you haven't been there, you'll have to go to Conrad's Hold first, which is about halfway up. From the fast travel station, it is a bit of a hike. If we zoom out here and spin around, you'll have to run from here all the way up. Just follow the right-hand side. You get to this back building here. You'll have to go up an elevator, jump this broken bridge, and come out past the Man of Fark um, crew challenge boss. And then this is the map transition just here, which is currently where I'm at. Uh, there's Man Vark over there, and we go into the slaughter shaft. Now, if you guys have never done one of these before, they all have five rounds. They all have several uh, waves within each round. Pretty sure it's five waves per round. To start the mission, just talk to this guy. Then you'll go in and then start from round one. To get to the Titan boss, it is round five, or wave five of round five. Uh, he'll spawn probably like three quarters of the way through it. Kill him if you guys want the Butcher, the Eruption, or the Shredifier. Those are his three dedicated drops. It can take a really long time to farm. Um, slaughter shafts, any of them, uh, they're dedicated drops because it does, it does take so long to get through all of the waves. If you guys want to do this on repeat, there is a like way faster way of doing it. Uh, if you guys want to do it on repeat uh, without going anywhere else, you can just down yourself after killing Titan. If you down yourself, make sure there are other enemies still alive. If they're all are dead, then it won't work. Uh, otherwise, you can fast travel back to the um, location you're currently at. Don't go anywhere else. Don't go to Sanctuary or anything like that. Just fast travel back to this room, and then you'll be able to do it again. There still has to be enemies alive. By doing that, essentially, you'll have just failed round five rather than the entire mission. That way, you can just go back in, do the five waves of round five rather than doing the whole first four rounds plus round five again. Probably saves about half an hour each run if you guys want to do this on a loop. Now, as for the melee one takedown, including the Valkyrie Sword and Wotan, if you guys have never done it before, from Marcus's place right here, you'll have to have completed the game first, and I believe the lowest you can spawn on is level 50. But this spot right here is where you'll accept the melee one takedown mission. Once you guys have accepted the mission, you've taken the Sanctuary ship to Midnight's Khan via the control panel thing on the bridge. You guys will have unlocked the Midnight's Khan area. This area is the entire boss fight arena mobbing just absolute mayhem is what this area is now as for the melee one takedown both valkyrie squad and wotan have a bunch of dedicated drops i'm not going to read them all out but i'll show them on screen both uh wotan and valkyrie share some dedicated drops and then a valkyrie squad have an extra 
two shields that are separated just to them as their dedicated drops. And then Wotan has a bunch of extra ones just for him as well. So I'll show them all on screen if you guys want to read through them. But you're more than welcome to pause the video now because I'm going to keep going through. If I read through them all, it's going to make this video a lot longer. And you already know how long this video is, so we don't want to make that longer. Up next, we have the Soulbar COV Assault Rifle. This thing only comes in Fire Elemental, no other elements and not non-elemental. It does come with anointments like you can see down the bottom. It is also in the World Drop system, but if you guys want to go for the dedicated drop spot, you can find it via Vormin Nates. Now, if you guys would like to farm this one, it is located in Promethea in the Meridian Outskirts. Uh, from the Meridian Outskirts Fast Roll Station, which is currently where we are, just behind us here. Jump in a car real quick, or if you're a Mario, just run really fast, I suppose. Go out to the left once you get out through this opening. There's a little bandit camp up in the air just here. Jump on this platform, and then jump up here again. I personally just run through all the psychos because otherwise it takes way too long to farm. But there is a boss enemy called Vorminates, who was originally a rare spawn enemy in the game, but is no longer that. He spawns every single time, and he has three legendaries in his loot pool. That includes the Sawbar, the Cutsman uh, SMG, as well as the Psycho Stabo. Psycho Stabber? Psycho Stabber Pistol. Up next, we're going to combine both the Embrace the Pain and Power is Pain Assault Rifles because both of them, starting with the Embrace the Pain, come in only Fire Elemental, no other elements, and no non-elementals, just Fire. They both also come with anointments and they're both in the World Drop system. But if you guys want to farm for either of these assault rifles via the dedicated drop, you'll find them at Hot Carl. If you guys are looking for Hot Carl, you'll have to go to Pandora first, then to Devil's Razor, about a quarter of the way down. Fast travel to Roland's Rest, which is currently where we are at. From the new station just here, just run to the left here. Use Spirit Driver to make it a little bit faster. Or if you have a different character, just use a Snowdrift. Uh, you can run out the back here and just jump up if you want, and then climb. Oh, come on. There we go. All is allowed just there if you'd rather do that. Um, Hot Carl is in the back here of this bandit camp, he spawns from here, he does have a shield which makes him immune from front attacks if he's got it up, but he does have four dedicated drops. There we go, now that I'm in photo mode I won't get killed. This is Hot Carl, I know he looks fantastic, he does have four dedicated drops including the companion Jacob's pistol, Sledge's shotgun which is returning from the original Borderlands game, the pain is power and embrace the pain, the last two being COV assault rifles. The farm itself not too difficult a little bit of a run not too bad though uh the main thing is there's four dedicated drops so it can take a little while if you guys are going for those good anointments on a particular weapon up next we have the dull assault rifles starting with the barrage this thing only comes in radiation corrosive and non-elemental does not come in fire cryo or shock as you can see it does come with anointments and if you guys want it you can get it via the world drop system or the dedicated drop spot is scrack if you guys want to farm for this one you guys can find it in pandora in Ascension Bluff, where we currently are, which means you can unlock it super early on in the game, which is fantastic. From the fast roll station just here, you want to jump in a car, uh, yep, there we go, or just run really fast depending on your character, go straight from the new station, miss this rock like I totally didn't just hit it, uh, and then once you get to this little area just here, there is a boss fight arena for the one and only Scrack. I believe he flies over this corner just here, um, there we go, there is Scrack plus a whole bunch of Skags spawn in this area. Scrack has two legendaries in his loot pool, including the Skexil pistol, as well as the Barrage Assault Rifle, which is a dull assault rifle. This guy is super annoying because he flies around everywhere, but he does only have two legendaries in his loot pool, so it shouldn't take too long to drop, hopefully. Up next, we have the Chaos Dull Assault Rifle. This thing comes in Cryo, Fire, Shock, and Corrosive, aka it just doesn't come in Radiation or Non-Elemental. As you can see, it comes with an Anointment as well, and if you guys want to farm it, it can come from the World Drop system, or if you want to go for the dedicated drop spot, it is the Psycho Billies. If you guys are going for the Psycho Billies, first go into Eden 6. About halfway down, you'll find the Amber Mire. From there, go into the Rogue's Hollow Fast Roll Station. It is by far the closest one. It's currently where I'm at. Uh, just run out this door here. You can go out underneath this tree. If you've got the mad handles to slide under there, you can do it a little bit faster. Ground Slam. Don't worry, you don't take full damage in Borderlands 3. And in this cave, you'll find four Psycho Billies. Now the Psycho Billies, there are four of them, but they do have five dedicated drops. Each of them can drop them all the same. It doesn't matter which one you kill, they all have a chance to drop it. And they all can drop it at the same time. There are five different ones. There's the Chaos, the Breeder, the Echo, the Devil's Forsome, and the Electric Banjo, all dedicated to these guys. That sounds like a lot of dedicated drops, but when you consider there's actually four of them, it actually spreads out to be on average less dedicated drops per boss than there is usually for most dedicated bosses. So this is actually a pretty easy farm. 
plus it's super close to the new station. Up next we have the Star Helix. This thing comes in Shock, Radiation and Cryo as well as Non-Elemental aka it doesn't come in Fire or Corrosive. As you can see there are anointments on this weapon as well down the bottom there. If you want to farm it you can get it from the World Drop system or the dedicated drop spot is the Power Troopers. If you guys want to farm for the Thunderball Fist you guys are going to have to go to Promethea and then to Atlas HQ which is currently where we are. This is the fast roll station just here and it's actually a really quick way to farm Fun relative to what most people would think from the fast travel station usually in the story it makes you run out here all the way around up these stairs and back all the way in but you actually don't have to do that i'll show you guys from the fast travel station just here Whoop, run out this door up the stairs and then rather than turning right like you do in the story you immediately turn left and head towards this balcony slash platform thing up here you guys are going to be farming the power troopers they were originally a rare spawn enemy in the game but now spawn every single time but i knew i wasn't gonna be able to do it first try from the garden bed run at that platform right there and then jump as you get to it perfect uh usually you can get every time i'm just a bit of a dirt then run towards this roof just here you're going to be farming the power troopers like i said which are of course a power rangers reference sometimes if you shoot there they uh, come down a little bit faster now these guys do have eight dedicated drops total which is a crazy high number it's the most dedicated drops of any one enemy but the thing is there's not one of them there's five they can all drop any of the eight uh, at any given time they multiple they usually drop multiple at the same time because there's five of them they all have a chance to drop any of the dedicated drops like i said there is eight dedicated drops so i'm going to read through the list for you guys there are two grenades being the trend fusion grenade and the surge there is a shield called the nova burner there's also three smgs including the hyperfocus the spinner as well as the vanquisher there's also the pistol, of course, which we're farming for, the Thunderball Fists. And there's also an Assault Rifle called the Star Helix that all drop from one of these five guys. So total eight is a very high number for dedicated drops for one boss. But because there's five of them, if you spread it out, it's actually on average less per enemy here to farm. So it actually shouldn't be too difficult for the farm for you guys. Next, we have the Warlord Dahl Assault Rifle. This thing comes in corrosive, fire, and shock, as well as non-elemental. Doesn't come in cryo and radiation. You can see it does have some annoyments down the bottom, so you can get annoyments on this weapon. If you want it, you can get it from the World Drop System or the dedicated drop spot is Billy the Anointed. Now, in order to find Billy the Anointed, first go to Eden 6, then go down to the Jacob's Estate area. Uh, from the fast travel station, it's a bit of a hike, unfortunately. If we spin this around and zoom out, just run straight through this banner camp area. I don't ever bother killing them all. It takes way too long. You climb a ladder right here, go across this bridge, follow my cursor all the way around. Uh, right here, there is an elevator slash lift thing that goes from here to here. Go up there. Then you make your way through the uh, actual Jacob's estate, uh, like manor, mansion thing. Go through here. Honestly, there's only one way you can ever go. Just follow all the way around here to get to my current location, which is this new U station. We came from there. There's a new station. There's an ammo dump. And then through to their theater room. This is exactly where you will find Billy the Anointed. Now, this big purple dude has four dedicated drops, three being assault rifles, the Warlord, the Lead Sprinkler, and the Gatlin Gun, as well as one Mose mod, the Raging Bear class mod. Up next, we have the Good Juju. This thing comes in all elemental types, including non elemental, like you can see on the card. It does also come with anointments. It doesn't drop in the world drop system though. It has two different dedicated drop systems. This one came out with the Mali One takedown, so its dedicated drops include Wotan and the Valkyrie squad. Otherwise, you can farm the Rampager for it to get the good juju. If you guys are looking for the Rampager, first go to Promethea, then all the way down the bottom, you'll find the Forgotten Basilica, I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. Uh, and then this is the just boss fight arena map. There's actually nothing else to this area. It's just this new station and ammo dump and then jump right down into the rampager fight now this guy has four dedicated drops and unfortunately has two immunity stages so the boss fight itself it can take a little while unfortunately but if you guys are looking for this farm they have four dedicated drops including the duke the good juju the stuff quartermizer and the cracker toa so any of those four weapons will drop from this guy Next, we have the Breath of Dying. This thing only comes in corrosive, no other elements, and does not come in non-elemental. You can see it does have anointments down the bottom. It can get it from the World Drop system, or if you want to farm for it at the dedicated drop spot, it drops from the crew challenge boss, the Blinding Banshee. If you guys want to know where the Blinding Banshee is, first go to Necro Defeo, and then to Desolation's Edge, which is currently where I am. Uh, you can honestly spawn at either of the two uh, spawn points. I prefer the Desolation's Edge because there is a um, catch ride close by 
fine. Spawn here, this is where you meet Titan by the way. Run outside, grab in a car from a catcher ride. Go out this way, follow the blue line to currently where I am, where there is another catcher ride and this new station. Just jump in a car from here if you're farming on repeat. Drive off to the left, jump off this cliff and right in this little, I mean, open, covered by rocks area, I guess, to make a little boss fight arena, you'll find the blinding banshee jump out of this spot right here. Now this dude has two dedicated drops in their loot pool, including the Breath of Dying, Dial Assault Rifle, and the Red Queen Grenade. Now this boss fight is actually pretty quick, has some armor and health, so that can take a little bit, but from the new station to the boss itself, you can literally use catch rides, that's super quick, and there's only two dedicated drops, so it shouldn't be too long to get the weapon you're after. Up next, we have the Jacob's Assault Rifle, starting with the Lead Sprinkler. This thing does not come in any elemental types because it shoots explosive rounds. It does come with an omens, like you can see on screen. It does drop from the world drop system, but if you guys want to farm the dedicated drops, you actually have two options for this one, starting with Billy the Anointed or Jabba Mogwire. Now, in order to find Billy the Anointed, first go to Eden 6 then go down to the Jacobs estate area uh, from the far shore station it's a bit of a hike unfortunately if we spin this around and zoom out just run straight through this banner camp area I don't ever bother killing them all it takes way too long you climb a ladder right here go across this bridge follow my cursor all the way around uh, right here there is an elevator slash lift thing that goes from here to here go up there then you make your way through the uh, actual Jacobs estate uh, like manor mansion thing go through here honestly there's only one way you can ever go just follow all the way around here to get to my current location which is this new use station we came from there there's a new station there's an ammo dump and then through to their theater room. This is exactly where you will find Billy the Anointed. Now this big purple dude has four dedicated drops, three being assault rifles, the Warlord, the Lead Sprinkler, and the Gatlin Gun, as well as one Mose mod, the Raging Bear class mod. Now as for the Jabba Mogwai's dedicated drops, you wanna to go to first Eden 6, then halfway down you'll find a Ferocious Canopy. From the fast roll station, it's a little bit of a hike. Uh, if we scroll out here, you'll see from the fast roll station, just follow the blue highlighted zone around to the left, all the way through this big open area and get to this location here. That is the new station which we're currently at. And then go to the left, you'll find a Jabba Mogwai's hut just there. Jabba Mogwai, Jabba Mogwai has three dedicated drops, including the Hellfire, the Lead Sprinkler, as well as the Magnificent Pistol. Though you don't actually have to fight your way through three dedicated drops if you're farming for either the Magnificent or the Lead Sprinkler. What I mean by that is if you're going for the Hellfire SMG, it is actually a guaranteed drop. If you kill this guy with fire, he'll drop it every single time. It has to be the original Jabba Mogwai. If you guys haven't found this guy before, if you damage him with any cryo weapons, grenades, anything like that, will actually multiply into an extra one, an extra one, an extra one, and it'll go on forever until you likely spawn too many in game crashes. So don't do that, but you can multiply them to get increased dedicated drops of the other two, being the Lead Sprinkler and the Magnificent Pistol. Those two, you can kill him in any other method as long as it's not fire, it'll have a chance to drop one of those two dedicated drops. So if you're going for either of those two, it's a pretty simple farm because you can multiply them. Saves you having to save and quit if you're on console and if you're on PC, it's, it's just generally faster anyway. So those two are pretty simple to get because there's only two dedicated drops and a bunch of enemies and the Hellfire is literally guaranteed, so that is extremely easy to get. Next, we have the Hand of Glory. This thing cannot come in any elemental type, just non-elemental. I personally have never seen an anointed drop, so please let me know in the comment section down below and I'll add it to the pin top comment if you guys have seen anointed drop, but so far I don't think you can get one anointed. It does not drop in the world drop system and there is no dedicated farm spot for it because it is a quest reward. The only way you can obtain this weapon, I believe it's called the Guns of Reliance, is a main mission through the campaign story. The only way you could obtain that after doing it the first time at max level would be doing like a true bolt hunter mode playthrough at the highest level or if there's a new mode release later on, doing one of those at top level will get you the mission reward being, being the hands of glory at max level. There's no secret steps or anything like that for this mission, you essentially just have to complete it, rescue the Jacob's uh, gunsmith, come back to this location and then you break into this chest here, which is where you find this weapon. And by break in, they give you the key to open it. And I'm pretty sure on top of that, the quest reward gives you one in your inventory anyway. Up next, we have the Rowan's Call Assault Rifle by Jacobs. This thing comes in Radiation, Shock, and Fire. It does come with annoyments and does drop in the World Drop System. But if you guys want to find the dedicated drop spot for it, it is the Slaughter Star 3000. It drops from Red Rain. If you guys are looking for the Slaughter Star 3000, first, if you've never been there before, go to Necrode Fair, and then down to Desolation's Edge, slash it's at the top. 
then go to Desolation's Edge Fast Roll Station. This is where you meet Typhon in the main campaign. Then run out to the catch ride, drive left where it's highlighted blue, come into this area here, fight your way through this entire mob area or just run through like I usually do. This is where you originally do the story for uh, General Traunt. Now you try and run up here and this is where they blow up the bridge in the story. Right at this spot here where I've got my cursor is where you'll find a mission for the Slaughter Star 3000. Then once you've accepted that, it'll tell you to go back to Sanctuary to navigate to it first. Then you come to the bridge, which is where you talked a little 4,000 times in the story. Go up to this keyboard and then fast travel to the Slaughter Star 3000. The Sanctuary 3 ship will take you there and then you'll go to the drop pod that then takes you to the Slaughter Star 3000. Of course, if you guys have already been to the Slaughter Star 3000, it's on its own planet slash area, so it'll just show up immediately in the planet section. Okay, once you've totally stuck the landing with the drop pod, you want to turn around or run to this guy over here. He will give you a mission for the Slaughter Star 3000. Like, it actually well, it welcomes you first. Then you accept the mission to the Slaughter Star 3000. If you guys have never done one of these before, Torg has three of them as in this point of the game. Maybe they add some more later on, but currently there is three. The same situation with all of them, there is five rounds and there's multiple waves within each round. Generally, I'm pretty sure it's five waves within each round. In the case of this one, there are two bosses that spawn at the end of wave five of round five, at the very, very end of the Slaughter Shaft. They're called Blue Fire and Red Rain. This is the giant arena in which you're gonna be fighting a whole bunch of melee one dudes. That is how you start each round, by the way. Press that button right there. Once you get to wave five, round five, there will be two mechs that spawn. I think it's about three quarters of the way through. Make sure you keep some smaller enemies alive, by the way, whilst you're doing this boss fight for many reasons. Uh, first, Blue Fire usually spawns, or yeah, Blue Fire, and then Red Rain spawns over here once you killed that mech. Sometimes they spawn together, but it's not actually supposed to do that. So usually, Blue Fire, Red Rain over here. Now, Blue Fire, the one that spawns here, drops the Rocket Boots artifact as well as the Lucian's Coal, whereas Red Rain, the one that spawns over here, second, drops the Launch Pad artifact as well as the Rowan's Coal Soul Raffle. Now, if you guys want to farm for any of these four items on repeat, there is a much faster way than, of doing it than doing all five rounds constantly. You can actually get to the fifth wave of the fifth round and then kill the two bosses, make sure there are some other smaller enemies alive, and you can either just fast travel back to the location in which we're at, just go to this drop pod right here, fast travel, make sure you do not go to Sanctuary, don't go to anywhere else, just fast travel there. By doing that, you can just do the five waves in round five again, rather than doing all five rounds with all the waves inside it again saves you a bunch of time you can also just down yourself from one of the enemies or just jump off the map and you will respawn there all the same and then you just fail round five and complete the round five again it'll make it way faster to farm if you want to do that up next we have the gatlin gun another jacob's assault rifle it does not come with any elemental types at all it's just non-elemental does come with annoyance and is in the world drop system but if you guys want to find the dedicated drop spot for this one it is billy the anointed now in order to find billy the anointed first go to eden six then go down to the jacobs estate area uh, from the fast travel station it's a bit of a hike unfortunately if we spin this around and zoom out just run straight through this banner camp area i don't ever bother killing them all it takes way too long you climb a ladder right here go across this bridge follow my cursor all the way around uh, right here, there is an elevator slash lift thing that goes from here to here. Go up there. Then you make your way through the uh, actual Jacob's estate, uh, like manor, mansion thing. Go through here. Honestly, there's only one way you can ever go. Just follow all the way around here to get to my current location, which is this new U station. We came from there. There's a new station. There's an ammo dump. And then through to their theater room. This is exactly where you will find Billy the Anointed. Now, this big purple dude has four dedicated drops, three being assault rifles, the Warlord, the Lead Sprinkler, and the Gatlin Gun, as well as one Moe's mod, the Raging Bear class mod. Up next, we have the Becca, I believe is how you pronounce it. This thing does come in only non-elemental, no elements whatsoever for this one. It does come with anointments and is not at all within the world drop system. There is no boss to farm at all either. The only way you can obtain this weapon is by completing all of the hammerlock hunt side missions. If you guys go to each map location, almost each map location, there's a crew challenge boss for the hammerlock hunts. Essentially, they're just um, beasts of some kind that you have to take down and complete all of those missions to get this as a mission reward sent to your mail from Sir Hammerlock. I'm not going to go through every legendary hunt location in this video because it'll make it so much longer than it already is. But if you guys go to each location and just check in the challenges tab just across from the far travel, go down see if you can find a legendary hunt. Like you can see uh, just here, there's a little skull 
that uh, skull shows up on the map and it shows you where the crew challenge boss will be in that area. If the legendary hunt challenge isn't in that area or doesn't show up there, it means there isn't one for that location. Just go to the next one and keep looking. If you guys are struggling with this, please let me know in the comment section down below and I'll be more than happy to make a separate video that shows you all of the crew challenge boss locations. Up next, we have the Torg Assault Rifle, starting with the Alchemist and the Beer Cat combined together because they have the same dedicated drop spot. For the uh, Alchemist, this thing drops in both Fire and Shock. Doesn't come in non-elemental or any other elements. It does drop with Anointed and it does drop in the World Drop system. But if you guys want to farm this or the Beer Cat, the dedicated drop spot is the Heckle and Hide Crew Challenge boss. The Beer Cat drops with every elemental type, including non-elemental. Does come with Anointed and drops in the World Drop system as well. And like I said, Heckle and Hide is the go-to dedicated drop spot for this and the Alchemist. If you guys are looking for Heckle and Hide, first you want to go to Eden. 6 then to Jacob's estate from the fast roll station it's not too far uh, if we zoom out here first you want to run up and then just straight through this bandit camp area right about here you'll find a ladder that takes you across this bridge here then make your way to this spot here which is where you will find the closest new station it's currently this uh, that's where we came from and if you turn around come into this part here you'll find Hecklin hide hidden away in this little cave back here I actually haven't even discovered them on this uh, character yet so Zero will introduce them as his crew challenge hunt. This is Heckle. He actually is the same person as Hyde because they are Goliath. First starts as Heckle and when they upgrade they turn into Hyde. They have the exact same dedicated drop rate so it doesn't matter if they're leveled up or they're exactly the same as they currently are. They'll have the exact same drops. Total for this guy there are three dedicated loot drops including the Alchemist, the Beer Cat Assault Rifle both from Torg and the Pestilence COV Pistol. The farm itself super super easy. First of all, he only has health, he's only a Goliath, you pretty much one tap him with any build. Plus, the new station is super, super close, so this is probably one of the easiest boss farms there is. Up next, we have the Laser Sploder. This thing comes with all elemental types, but not non-elemental. Does come with anointments and drops in the world drop system, but if you guys want to farm for the dedicated drop location for the Laser Sploder, you can find it at Sylvestra. In Necro de Feo in Tanzandir, Rowan's going to be farming the other crew challenge boss there and that is atomic and celestro which is currently where we are from the fast travel station it is unfortunately quite a hike i switched to amara just so we could run it super super quick from the fast travel station just run all the way through this area where it's highlighted blue keep to the right hand side and keep legging it all the way through to currently where we are here at this new station so i switched to amara so she has super fast movement speed because it is unfortunately quite a hike but if you run towards this box here any character can make this jump and then this jump over the wall I just keep using Swift Retriever so we move super super quick. If you guys are farming uh, with any other character uh, with slow movement speed, try using a Snowdrift artifact maybe for super quick slide speed. Once you get up to this area here, you'll find Atomic and Celestro just in the back left here. Now Celestro being at the top of the screen about to punch us in the face, drops four legendary weapons in his loot pool, has the Pestilence pistol itself including the laser spoiler also, the Spiritual Driver Amara class mod as well as the rectifier shield. Whereas Atomic at the bottom of the screen towards the right hand side it drops three legendary items including the plain toy artifact, the phasor I believe is how you pronounce it, um, assault rifle as well as the red suit shield. Up next we have the Juliet's Dazzle. This thing only comes in cryo and non-elemental, not any other elemental types whatsoever. It does come with anointments and has two different dedicated drop locations because it's not in the world drop system. If you guys want to obtain this one, you can get it from Wotan or the Valkyrie Squad or Aurelia Hammerlock. Now as for the melee one takedown, including the Valkyrie Squad and Wotan, if you guys have never done it before, from Marcus's place right here, you'll have to have completed the game first and I believe the lowest it can spawn on is level 50 but this spot right here is where you'll accept the melee one takedown mission once you guys have accepted the mission you've taken the sanctuary ship to midnight's khan via the control panel thing on the bridge you guys will have unlocked the midnight's khan area this area is the entire boss fight arena mobbing just absolute mayhem is what this area is now as for the melee one takedown both valkyrie squad and wotan have a bunch of dedicated drops i'm not going to read them all out but i'll show them on screen both uh wotan and valkyrie share some dedicated drops and then a valkyrie squad have an extra two shields that are separated just to them as their dedicated drops and then wotan has a bunch of extra ones just for him as well so i'll show them all on screen if you guys want to read through them but you're more than welcome to pause the video now because i'm going to keep going through if i read through them all it's going to make this video a lot longer and you already know how long this video is so we don't want to make that long now if you guys are going for Aurelia Hamlock, first you want to go to Eden 6 and then down to Black Barrel Cellars near the bottom here. From the fast travel station, uh, just run through this entire bandit camp area 
Honestly, I just sprinted through them. Don't worry about killing them if you don't want to. Right all the way through here, jump up. There's a little like conveyor belt situation here. That's how you get through there. And then all the way upstairs to this spot here, there is a new station and just here. Turn around and then jump down this hole. There's a bunch of red chests around here, by the way. If you want to get them, you can get them. There's also another one just there as you jump down. If you jump all the way down, you'll make it into the Aurelia boss fight arena. She has three dedicated drop spots if you go into photo mode so she doesn't kill us while I'm explaining. She drops the frozen heart shield, the Juliet's dazzle and the widow maker grenade. The boss fight itself not too difficult, does unfortunately have some immunity stages but the new station is super close so time wise it's actually not too bad. Up next we have the tribal, the final torque assault rifle. This thing comes in fire, corrosive, shock and radiation as well as non-elemental. Essentially just not cryo for this weapon. It does come with anointments and is in the world drop system but if you guys want to farm for this one you can get it in the dedicated drop spot of Manvark. If you guys are looking for Manvark first go to Pandora then to Conrad's Hold. Uh, there's two different strats honestly if you are on PC and have fast load times I'd recommend going to the Slaughter Shard it's a little bit faster I'll show you guys why but everybody else go to Conrad's Hold for sure. From the fast shuttle station uh, this is where it is here I'll move up a bit so from here Run all the way through this blue area. It's a whole bunch of uh, bandits and psychos, by the way. So just run through them if you don't want to kill them. Uh, come to this back room here. There's an elevator up. And then jump across this bridge. And you'll find a new station where I currently am. From here, turn around. Run through this building here. We use our scope to drive to get there a little quicker. And you'll see a man bark jump out of this one particularly. Uh, one of them here. Where, where, where are you at? There you are, man bark. Just face grasp the heck out of him. Go into photo mode. Now main bark is an interesting kind of boss. Like you can see it starts as a large bark. The second stage after you've killed this one drops into a, like a small tank with a cool hat and after you kill that one it goes into like a baby bark. Once you killed that it goes back into like a medium size so almost that size bark. Once you kill that one it is completely done. There's four different stages you have to wait for them to evolve. It does take a little bit. Not too difficult of a boss fight though. There is a lot of buckets around this area so if you have a good like mobbing weapon that just shreds a whole bunch of enemies at the same time that would make it way faster and more efficient. Uh, but if you guys are going for this one there is three dedicated drops including the head explosion sniper rifle, the flacker shotgun and the tri-bolt torg assault rifle. Now like I said if you guys are on PC or if you're on console and you plan on farming for a long time the strat that I would suggest is going from the slaughter shaft uh, right here. This is the part of the travel station. Once you go to the slaughter shaft and then travel through the door, you come out to here. So every time you log, save and quit, you'll spawn here and you'll instantly be able to see man bark spawn there. You won't have to run through that room, so it'll save you a little bit of extra time. Up next, we have the blood off assault rifle, starting with the Lucian's Call. This thing comes in corrosive, cryo and fire. Essentially, it doesn't come with a radiation or a shock, unfortunately. It does come with anointed and drops in the world drop system, but if you guys want to farm for this thing in the dedicated drop location, you can get it from the Slaughter Star 3000. If you guys are looking for the Slaughter Star 3000 first, if you've never been there before, go to Necrod Fair and then down to Desolation's Edge slash it's at the top. Then go to Desolation's Edge Fast Roll Station. This is where you meet Typhon in the main campaign. Then run out to the catch ride, drive left where it's highlighted blue, come into this area here, fight your way through this entire mob area or just run through like I usually do. This is where you originally do the story for uh, General Traunt. Now you try and run up here and this is where they blow up the bridge in the story. Right at this spot here where I've got my cursor is where you'll find a mission for the Slaughter Star 3000. Then once you've accepted that it'll tell you to go back to Sanctuary to navigate to it first. Then you come to the bridge which is where you talked a little 4,000 times in the story. Go up to this keyboard and then fast travel to the Slaughter Star 3000. The Sanctuary 3 ship will take you there and then you'll go to the drop pod that then takes you to the Slaughter Star 3000. Of course if you guys have already been to the Slaughter Star 3000 it's on its own planet slash area so it'll just show up immediately in the planet section. Okay once you've totally stuck the landing with the drop pod you want to turn around or run to this guy over here he will give you a mission for the Slaughter Star 3000. Like, it actually well, it welcomes you first then you accept the mission to the Slaughter Star 3000. If you guys have never done one of these before Torg has three of them as in this point of the game maybe they add some more later on but currently there is three the same situation with all of them there is five rounds and there's multiple waves within each round generally i'm pretty sure it's five waves within each round in the case of this one there are two bosses that spawn at the end of wave five of round five the very very end of the slaughter shaft they're called blue fire and red rain this is the giant arena in which you're going to be fighting a whole bunch of melee one dudes that is how you start each round by the way press that button right there once you get to wave five round five there will be two mechs that spawn i think it's about three quarters of the way through make sure you keep some smaller enemies alive by the way whilst you're doing this boss fight for many reasons uh first blue fire usually spawns or 
yeah, blue fire, and then red rain spawns over here once you've killed it. That mech, sometimes they spawn together, but it's not actually supposed to do that. So usually, blue fire, red rain over here. Now, blue fire, the one that spawns here, drops the rocket boots artifact as well as the illusions coal, whereas red rain, the one that spawns over here, second, drops the launch pad artifact as well as the Rowan's coal assault rifle. Now, if you guys want to farm for any of these four items on repeat, there is a much faster way of doing it than doing all five rounds constantly. You can actually get to the fifth wave of the fifth round and then kill the two bosses, make sure there are some other smaller enemies alive, and you can either just fast travel back to the location in which we're at, just go to this drop pod right here, fast travel, make sure you do not go to Sanctuary, don't go to anywhere else, just fast travel there. By doing that, you can just do the five waves in round five again, rather than doing all five rounds with all the waves inside it again saves you a bunch of time you can also just down yourself from one of the enemies or just jump off the map and you will respawn there all the same and then you just fail round five and complete the round five again it'll make it way faster to farm if you want to do that up next we have the phaser assault rifle this thing comes in all elemental types including non-elemental if you guys want you can get an anointed version and you can get it from the world drop system but if you guys want to farm the dedicated drop spot atomic is the place to go in necro Defeo in tanzandir ruins going to be farming the other crew challenge boss there and that is atomic and celestro which is currently where we are from the fast travel station it is unfortunately quite a hike i switched to amara just so we could run it super super quick from the fast travel station, just run all the way through this area where it's highlighted blue, keep to the right hand side, and keep legging it all the way through to currently where we are here at this new station. So I switched to Amara so she has super fast movement speed because it is unfortunately quite a hike. But if you run towards this box here, any character can make this jump and then this jump over the wall. I just keep using Swift for Travis, so we move super, super quick. If you guys are farming uh, with any other character uh, with slow movement speed, try using a snowdrift artifact maybe for super quick slide speed. Once you get up to this area here, you'll find Atomic and Celestro just in the back left here. Now Celestro being at the top of the screen about to punch us in the face, drops four legendary weapons in his loot pool, has the Pestilence pistol itself, including the laser spoiler, also the Spiritual Driver Amara class mod, as well as the Rectifier shield. Whereas Atomic at the bottom of the screen towards the right hand side, it drops three legendary items, including the Plain Toyed Artifact, the Phasor, I believe is how you pronounce it, um, Assault Rifle as well, as the red suit shield up next we have the shredder fire this thing can come in every elemental type including non-elemental which is awesome it does also come with anointments and drops in the world drop system but if you guys want to farm for the dedicated drop spot you can get it from the raging titan if you guys are going for the slaughter shaft you guys are going to want to go to pandora first if you've been there before it'll just show up at the bottom if you haven't been there you'll have to go to conrad's hold first which is about halfway up from the fast travel station it is a bit of a hike if we zoom out here and spin around you'll have to run from here all the way up just follow the right hand side you get to this back building here you'll have to go up an elevator jump this broken bridge and come out past the man of arc um crew challenge boss and then this is the map transition just here which is currently where i'm at uh there's man Vark over there and we can go into the slaughter shaft now, if you guys have never done one of these before, they all have five rounds. They all have several uh, waves within each round. Pretty sure it's five waves per round. To start the mission, just talk to this guy. Then you'll go in and then start from round one. To get to the Titan boss, it is round five, or wave five of round five. Uh, he'll spawn probably like three quarters of the way through it. Kill him if you guys want the Butcher, the Eruption, or the Shredder Fire. Those are his three dedicated drops. It can take a really long time to farm. Um, slaughter shafts any of them uh, they're dedicated drops because it does, does take so long to get through all of the waves if you guys want to do this on repeat there is a like way faster way of doing it uh, if you guys want to do it on repeat uh, without going anywhere else you can just down yourself after killing titan if you down yourself make sure there are other enemies still alive if they're all are dead then it won't work uh, otherwise you can fast travel back to the um, location you're currently at don't go anywhere else don't go to sanctuary or anything like that just fast travel back to this room and then you'll be able to do it again there still has to be enemies alive by doing that essentially you'll have just failed round five rather than the entire mission that way you can just go back in do the five waves of round five rather than doing the whole first four rounds plus round five again probably saves about half an hour each run if you guys want to do this on a loop up next we have the sickle assault rifle this thing comes in all elemental types including non-elemental like this one currently is it also comes with anointments and drops in the world drop system but if you guys want to farm for that dedicated drop spot it is dropped from water eden six and then down to the anvil 
and then from the fast travel location it is quite a hike let's just say that you're gonna have to run all the way from if i can turn the map there we go from the fast travel location at the bottom of the screen run through the entire bandit camp area go up to this room here this is tiny tina's uh room just in here actually and go outside hook a right run all the way down past the bridge where you meet mordecai and that's where i currently am up in the very top right of the screen i again switch to amara because she's the, just the fastest zoomer i have jump down this hole i totally missed it but there it is uh and you'll be fighting the warden now the warden drops three legendary items including the sickle the wagon wheel of course and the three minute rocket launcher which is dedicated only to him so he does have three legendary items unfortunately it does take a little while to get the things you want especially if you guys are going for anointments and he does have three immunity stages unfortunately once you get to each third of his armor he goes into immunity stage and then one last one once you get down to his health up next we're going to combine both the damned assault rifle and the dictator assault rifle because they've both got the same dedicated drop location as for the damned it comes with all elemental types as well as non-elemental comes with anointments and is in the world drop system if you guys want to farm for the dictator you can also get in all elemental types as well as non-elemental and comes with anointments and is in the world drop system so all the same on those fronts including the dedicated drop location is exactly the same and that is agonizer 9000 go to pandora first then down to the guts of carnivora from the fast roll station it is unfortunately quite a hike if we zoom out here it is quite a large bandit camp but there is only one way to go so just run your way through this entire thing i don't ever bother killing them all because they just take away too long once you get all the way up to where i currently am there is a new station right next to the agonizer 9000 bus fight there's also an ammo dump just here Agonizer 9000 does have four dedicated drops in his loot pool, including the Crater's EMP5 SMG, the Dictator Assault Rifle, as well as the Damned Assault Rifle, and an artifact called the White Elephant. There are four dedicated drops total, so it does take a little while to get the one you're looking for, particularly if you're going for a good anointment. But Agonizer is a great place to get a bunch of world drop legendaries at the same time. Up next, we have the Ogre Assault Rifle. This thing only comes in non-elemental because it does shoot explosive bullets. You can get anointments on it, and it does drop in the world drop system. So there is a boss you can farm for all three of the infinity pistol the ogre assault rifle and the link pistol but you guys have to first complete a side quest called malevolent practice which you collect from sir hamlock just after you rescue him from the warden in the main story so there's two places you can farm him or find sir hamlock first uh go to eden six and then you want to go to flood more basin uh the closest fast roll station is noddy peak this is where you find uh wainwright jacobs you can collect the mission from there Otherwise, you guys can just talk to him at Sanctuary. He's got a little office just above Marcus's um, shop here. So from the shop, just here, I'm sure everyone knows where Marcus's joint is. Just go upstairs, turn around, and in this little building here, you will find Sir Hamlock himself, in which you'll be able to collect the mission from just here. Now, once you guys have finished that mission, you guys will be able to farm the Anointed Alpha in Eden 6 in the Anvil area. From the fast travel station at the bottom of the screen here, going to run through the entire area filled with mobs to get to this big ambush arena thing just here. There is a new station just back here, so the run isn't too long. Just want to run through here, up the stairs, and in this room towards the back, you'll find a bunch of cells where the anointed alpha will spawn. I'll show you guys a run on screen real quick of me farming the anointed alpha from that new station. That is generally the closest one. There is a secondary option if you guys want to go to the um, room where you find Tiny Tina. She has an ammo dump there if you guys are running low on ammo. It just takes a little bit longer to run out from that room. But like I said, in the back of the room, there'll be a bunch of cells where he will spawn. Uh, he does have some immunity stages, depending on how much damage you're putting out. You can skip them if you are strong enough. Otherwise, he'll have a weird shield thing in which uh, three to four transparent versions of himself will come out. Once you kill those, his uh, shield will break and you'll be able to kill him also. He has three legendaries in his dedicated loot pool, including the Link, the Ogre Assault Rifle, as well as the Infinity Pistol. And that was every single legendary assault rifle in Borderlands 3 and all their dedicated drops. I hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, feel free to smash subscribe it down below. Hit that bell and YouTube will notify you for whenever I post a video. If you guys want to help me out even more, I'd love it if you guys could smash like and share the video. It really helps the channel grow and that would be amazing. If you guys want to check us out on Twitch, don't forget it's always linked in the description down below or just search Cody McHugh on Twitch. My name is the same on all my social media. I also have a Twitter as well if you guys want to check me out there. If you guys want any of the other videos, again, always linked in the description. There will be a playlist or there will be all of the individual links if you guys want those. More than welcome to check out them as well. And yeah, other than that, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. I shall see you guys in the next video and all live stream. Till then, adios.